The third Republican debate on CNBC didn't see as many viewers as the first two debates. However, some observers might say it was must-see TV when it comes to a real look at mainstream media bias at work. Several times during the debate, the audience actually booed the moderators for their questions being used to bait the candidates. You were on the homepage of their website with the logo over your shoulder. If somebody put me on their homepage, they did it without my permission. Does that not speak to your vetting process or judgment in any way? No, it speaks to the fact that I don't know that it's going on. <laughs> See, they know. You know. The Democrats have the ultimate super PAC. It's called the mainstream media. Who every single day, and I'll tell you why. Last week, Hillary Clinton went before a committee. She admitted she had sent emails to her family saying, hey, this attack in Benghazi was caused by al-Qaeda-like elements. She spent over a week telling the families of those victims and the American people that it was because of a video. And yet the mainstream media is going around saying it was the greatest week in Hillary Clinton's campaign. It was the week she got exposed as a liar. Brent Bozell, the president of the Media Research Center, joins us now to discuss the fallout from last night's debate. Brent, thanks a lot for joining us. My pleasure. So Marco Rubio called the mainstream media the Democrats' super PAC last night. Did he hit the nail on the head? And are you surprised at how things went last night? Well, you know, the, my, only, my only criticism of Marco's comment was the phrase mainstream media. There's nothing mainstream about, about this press. This is a left-wing, anti-conservative, and in this case, anti-Republican uh, uh, press. The, the, the clip you, you played was so good because it showed unequivocally that the goal of the CNBC moderator was to hurt Ben Carson. When Ben Carson gave him a perfectly good answer, which was the third answer in the question, he came back and just turned the subject, trying to hit him again, hurt him one more time. By the time it got to Marco Rubio, actually by the time it got to Ted Cruz, the, pa the panel was, was the, the Republicans were fed up. When Cruz erupted on the, on the moderators, you heard the audience. What you heard also was nationally, a national explosion of, from the public just saying, we're fed up with these people, let them have it. And it was a field day after that. I, I've been waiting for this to happen for about 20 years. <laughs> well, why this debate? You know, the CNN debate, you know, you saw some bias, but not to this degree. What happened last night? You know, it's interesting. I, I've heard more than one um, analyst today trying to do some spin uh, for the media. Imagine that, the media doing spin for themselves um, by, by saying that, well, this was you know, a setup by Republicans. No, it wasn't. But the difference was that as opposed to the Fox debate, as opposed to the CNN debate, to the first debates where you didn't have that kind of gotcha, this was all about gotcha last night. It was all about gotcha. And they were doing it to every single one of them. Every single one of them not only had a gotcha question, but they were ad hominem questions, as, as Ted Cruz pointed out, questioning the, the, uh, the wisdom of Ben Carson, uh, uh, the sanity uh, of uh, Donald Trump, the ethics of Marco Rubio, um, the, the, uh, uh, the, the sensibilities of Ted Cruz. And what happened was at the end of it, the Republicans joined together. These, these foes, these people who've been at each other's throats for months, turn and just spontaneously united against the press. Um, and it was painful to see what they did to these reporters. So when you look at the overall media landscape right now, you see this so-called mainstream um, media with its liberal bias. There is, of course, alternative uh, media out there. Do you see them bridging the gap in any way? Well, you know, the question that's being asked right now, Heather, is, is why did the Republicans do this debate in the first place? Why did they select? And, and, and they agreed to these moderators. And it happens every time. You know, after the fact, there's a lot of gnashing of teeth and, and thumping of chests about how, with indignation as, as to what was done. And yet the Republicans agreed to the format. Uh, why do they agree to do some of these? The, you know, the NBC brand is so hostile to the Republican Party, whether it's the Brian Williams on NBC, whether it's the Chris Matthews on MSNBC, or whether it's the John Harwood on CNBC, the bottom, the, the, you know, the 
common denominator is NBC. Why do Republicans go on these networks when they know they don't need to anymore? Once upon a time, you had three networks. You had to go on there. But now you've got outlets such as yours. You've got other television outlets. You've got the Internet. You've got talk radio. You can reach, you've got social media. You can reach 10 times as many people as CNN, as CNNBC can. So why do you bother going on that network? Well, going forward, Ben Carson, his campaign, of course, is calling on the RNC to have the debate format changed so it allows candidates more time to talk. Is that going to work? Is that a good idea? They've got to do something. Um, in, in fairness to, to moderators, it's very difficult to have a debate when you've got nine people, 10 people, 11 people on the stage. Um, it, it's almost impossible to have a, 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 an in-depth discussion on things. And that's an issue that's got to be tackled in the future. And for, for, the, for the present, I think the Republicans, if I were Reince Priebus, I would make a very uh, a public declaration to all the the uh, um, the other networks that are are preparing to do these interviews that we want in writing a commitment that your moderators are going to ask questions and they're going to be asked questions of substance and they're going to shut their mouths the moment they ask the question. This is not a gotcha uh, situation. And oh by the way, they would never ever think of doing such a thing to Hillary Clinton. Or Bernie Sanders. Never in their wildest dreams would you ever see what you saw last night aimed at a Democrat. So I think Reince Priebus and the Republicans should uh, draw a line in the sand after last night and make some very strong demands going forward or decline to participate in those debates. Well, I know the original debate notion is to have a debate between candidates, not between candidates and the moderators. So I think a lot of people are hoping for that direction. Brent Bozell, Media Research Center, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me.